In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I transformed a 1990s time capsule into a contemporary, beautiful rental property and how I did it on a tight budget. And if you watch to the end, I'll show you exactly how much I spent and how much the property's worth today. So with that being said, let's dive in. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. My name is Daniel and today is episode one in a unique 10 part series. There's tons of great content coming down the line in the future but today is gonna to be special. We are taking an unprecedented look at how I renovated a rental property and every single expense in between. Today, you're gonna to experience nine months of work into a 20 minute video, so let's do it. In order to catch you up to speed, let me take you back a couple years and tell you a short story. I'd been looking for a duplex to house hack for quite some time in Northwest Arkansas and finally came across the perfect candidate in Southeast Rogers. If you're unfamiliar with house hacking, the basic concept is to eliminate your housing expenses by having roommates or tenants that cover your mortgage. I'll go more into depth on that in a future video. Back to the duplex. It was a for sale by owner listed by the original owner who had built it back in the early 90s. After going back and forth in negotiation, I was able to negotiate down to a price of $190,000 with the sellers covering the closing costs. 45 days later, I was sitting at the closing table signing paperwork and I had officially taken ownership. Then reality set in. Now what? I bought the duplex fully tenanted, so I really didn't know what I was getting into in terms of the inside condition. I needed to owner occupy one side, so after raising rents, one tenant decided to move out and I moved in. Well, sorta. It needed some TLC to say the least. So I did what any other human would do in the 21st century. I Googled how to remodel a duplex. And after hours of tutorials and podcasts, I was ready. I had done a light remodel on a century-old single-family house, but I hadn't taken on a medium luxury remodel to this scale. But if I can encourage you with anything, it would be this, that you can do it. There are a plethora of free online resources, YouTube, podcasts, books, and even pros at your local Lowe's or Home Depot that have experience you can learn from if you're just willing to start a conversation. And so the craziness began. Let's take a before walkthrough. Now, as you can see from this before video, the duplex was quite dated. It never had been updated to any extent, so it was time for the blue carpet to go. There was mismatching tile in the hallway that spills into the kitchen, old appliances, aging bathrooms, and an obsolete kitchen. So the HVAC and the hot water heater, over 20 years old, and the lighting definitely needed an overhaul. I told you I'd be extremely transparent on this channel, so I definitely will be. I'm about to share as much detail as I possibly can without holding back anything financially or knowledge based. I will share a ton of pro tips, run through the numbers, and total final expenses at the end. By the end of this video, you should feel pretty confident on taking on a remodel yourself. Alright, let's jump into the nitty gritty and start with the demo. To start with, I ripped out the carpet and removed the trim with a pry bar and putty knife in order not to hurt the drywall. I tore out all the tile myself with a demolition jackhammer that I bought for $140 on walmart.com as opposed to renting one for $150 a day. Now what I didn't realize is that the jackhammer wouldn't get up everything. Now I gotta be honest with you all, scraping 600 feet of thin set off a concrete slab with a 1 inch diameter air chisel was one of the most mentally and physically exhausting activities I have ever done. Way worse than running seven miles at a 6.30 pace. Way, way worse. So in the future, I would recommend demoing the tile yourself and hiring someone for a few hours with heavy duty floor scraping equipment to knock out the rest. You will save your sanity in about five days of your life. Now, pro tip, when hauling away debris, put down carpet or cardboard before loading in you will save yourself a lot of hassle later when unloading. Another pro tip, you'd be shocked at what people will actually buy off the Facebook marketplace from a remodel. I was even able to sell a group of white square tiles I had just demoed. They weren't damaged, but I sold them for 20 bucks. Now, not only did I make money on it, but I saved time and effort not taking it to the dump. And there's less waste in the landfill. So win, win, win. When it comes to bathroom backsplash, there's no good way to remove it without damaging the drywall. So I cut out the drywall and replaced it with drywall remnants that I bought on the Facebook marketplace for $10. Now the Facebook marketplace will definitely be a theme throughout this remodel. 
I intentionally planned for the subway tile to cover the drywall seam so I wouldn't have to retexturize and match it to the old style. I remudded the area with two gallon container of drywall mud that I bought at Lowe's for $17. I popped off the old vanity tops and sold them on the Facebook marketplace for $20 each. In comes the granite. I bought two 5x5 slabs of high-end granite on the Facebook marketplace for $200. A pro tip to think about, some materials don't really age much if they're taken care of well. So granite, for example, could be used for a decade and look brand new if sealed and treated properly. You might be wondering, how did I get a 5x5 piece of granite to fit into this little bathroom? Well, I didn't. I had a local granite guy come take measurements, cut the slab into two pieces that fit both vanities, and included a modern rectangular undermount sinkhole. Having already bought the material, I only had to pay the granite guy $20 an hour to transport, measure, cut, and install two pieces. That totaled $100. Now the kitchen granite was one of the more expensive items in the duplex, but definitely worth it. I mentioned the granite guy earlier, so I was able to get a great rate with him installing the bathroom granite because I also gave him the kitchen job. So I tried my hardest to find granite on the Facebook marketplace for the kitchen, but I simply couldn't. So for roughly 32 square feet of half inch gray granite, I paid $1,050, which included measuring, cutting, install, undermount sinkhole, and double basin stainless steel sink. So I was able to negotiate that price so low because I promised him the work on the other side of the duplex as well, which he has since completed and did an excellent job. A pro tip. Whatever sink fixture you're going to install, have it ready and available when the granite guy is present because he will cut the holes accordingly. You definitely do not want to have three holes in your granite if you decide to install a single lever faucet or vice versa. So I had the boxes and fixtures ready to go, which helped tremendously. Now, building the kitchen island was a lot of fun. Time consuming, but fun. Buying base cabinets are anywhere from $250 to $400 at a big box retailer. Now, I think that's ridiculous, so like most everything else, I took to Facebook Marketplace for a solution. I found a guy that stored, damaged, and returned items from Lowe's. He had a whole host of cabinets, and I was able to pick up these two for a total of $85. All I had to do was tack the drawer front back on, realign the cabinet door hinges, and glue together a back panel. So it was well worth it. Pro tip. You should definitely test out the location of the island you want to build by placing temporary cabinets and chairs so you get to feel the functionality once you permanently place the cabinets. You want to make sure that there's plenty of room to open the dishwasher, stove, and be able to walk around somebody else in the kitchen. The distance I used from the island to the main countertops was 38 inches, in case anyone's curious. After carefully measuring exactly where you want the island to sit, the next step was to construct a brace out of 2x4s at the bottom and drill into the foundation for stronger support. Now this was not nearly as difficult as you might think. I simply bought a concrete bit at Lowe's for $8, a few concrete screws for $4, and you're good to go. Notice I drilled in four corner pieces to create another level of the brace. The purpose of that is to have a slightly elevated point of strength which provides better support. All right, after the brace is complete, slowly lower the cabinet bases over the top and drill the cabinet into the brace. I would later buy a four x eight sheet of furniture grade plywood for $50 at Lowe's and cover those base cabinets to give it a real clean and streamlined look. I also bought an eight foot piece of trim for $13 that I cut into four to really add the finishing touches. I had a friend construct the butcher block island for $200. The butcher block really provides a visual break from that black, white, and gray color scheme and gives the kitchen a more artisan feel. The island not only makes the kitchen look higher end, but increases the storage and just makes it more practical. All right, let's talk toilets and plumbing. Like electrical, if, if you don't know what you're doing, you should stay away to some extent. Pro tip, if you pay a professional to do a task, ask if you can observe them and see what you can learn. Oftentimes, they're happy to share from their wealth of knowledge and you might end up picking up something that would help you in future remodels. On that same note, on the flip side, don't be annoying, don't ask dumb questions. If someone feels pestered, they won't do their best work. And if they do share their knowledge with you, tip them beyond the price of their labor and thank them. This will go a long, long way in building a relationship and making them feel validated for helping you. Think about it. If a plumber has two clients needing urgent service and client A was a pain to work with, tried to nickel and dime them, but client B paid on time, gave a tip, and was very appreciative, 
who do you think that plumber is going to go to first? So you get the point. When you find a great contractor, take care of them and respect their time. It will do wonders as you begin to build your real estate business and scale. All right, off that soapbox. So total paid for the plumber was $650, and that was to rerun some lines, install faucets, tub fixtures, toilets, garbage disposal for 30 bucks, and a few other miscellaneous items. Toilets. So after shutting off the water supply, which is very important, I removed both toilets and eventually sold them on the Facebook marketplace for $10 each. I bought brand new top of the line cooler toilets for 200 a piece from Lowe's. Now, yeah, that is a bit pricey, but the last thing you want is a problematic toilet. So invest in a solid toilet. You can tell the quality of a toilet by the type of materials used inside the tank. I would stay away from cheap plastic and look for more of a heavy metal rod, heavy duty fill valves, tubes, and flappers. Now, if you know nothing about toilets, that is totally fine. The touch test will really tell you a lot about it. I must interject that there's a huge difference between a high quality toilet and a high priced one. Now, there is no need to go out and buy a toilet that has an automatic closing lid, a heated seat, and six different buttons on top. Don't go fancy, go quality, especially for a long-term rental. Electrical. The original kitchen lighting, frankly, was terrible. It was so dark and dingy, it was hard to see. So my father might be a highly skilled avionics electrical engineer, but the idea of electrical wires scares me almost as bad as being tested on wattage and joules in my high school physics class. So I stayed away from that part. I did the prep work though, and marked the ceiling where I wanted the lights and diagrammed out where I wanted the wall switches. Now again, I hired a professional electrician in the evening to come rewire up in the attic and make holes for the pancake recessed LED lights. Labor and wiring totaled $550. I found a very inexpensive way to light the whole rental property. Instead of buying electrical fixtures one at a time for 50 to 100 bucks a pop, I bought 24 pancake LED lights for $150 total, which averaged about six bucks a light. Not only do they put out bright white light, but you never have to worry about changing bulbs and they're waterproof, which is great for over showers and sinks. Paint. Now, this was interesting. I learned quite a bit here but mostly about how to deal with a contractor who consistently misses their deadline. I hired that out because I was getting tight on time and it would have taken me forever. I definitely learned my lesson scraping the thin set off the floor. I paid a total of $3,300, which included cabinets being sanded, treated, painted, all of the walls and ceilings painted, and that included the doors, trim, and the crown molding. While it took a while, the quality was good. Pro tip. If I would have replaced cabinets, I would have been looking at three to $5,000. And in fact, houses built before 2000 typically have higher quality cabinets than what you can buy today, unless you go custom and then you're definitely gonna pay for it. With that being said, a good sanding, treating, and painting of your cabinets will make your kitchen look brand new and age fairly well. Always make sure to paint before the flooring's installed if at all possible. Now this will greatly reduce the cost and it should shorten the timeline of the painters. Before we get into flooring, we definitely had to record a few important messages on the slab. This included a few of our favorite Bible verses and our passive income goals. I wonder who will end up seeing that in 50 years. Okay, back to flooring. I was able to get high-end luxury vinyl plank bought and installed for $2.19 a square foot, so I jumped on that. Again, my negotiating power came in the form of offering the contractor the option to do the other side of the duplex as well. The total came out to be $2,600, and let me tell you, that crew did really well. I still have yet to find one mistake in their install. Now, the great part of Luxury Vinyl Plank is that it's durable and it doesn't soak up smell. It's also liquid proof, so if you happen to spill your coffee or an animal does their business, it won't sink in unlike traditional wood or carpet. Another visual benefit of having just one type of flooring throughout the whole unit is that it really makes the space feel larger. It's also very easy to clean just using the steam mop. Doorknobs, hinges, deadbolt locks, and hardware in general can make a huge difference for not a lot of cost. I went with a matte black look which looks super sharp on the white doors and walls. I spent a total of $350 in this area and significantly increase the look and the functionality. Tile and subway backsplash. Besides the granite from the Facebook marketplace, this was definitely the biggest win of the remodel. You might think 50 square foot of tile, 
Oh, a couple hundred dollars at least. Nope. I was paid to install it. Let me explain. This is a great concept for buying anything, but especially with remodeled materials. Long story short, I bought a whole pallet of subway tile backsplash from a liquidation store for $50. Now it included three different types of shapes and sizes, so I immediately sold off eight boxes and made $80. But the best part about this is I still had two thirds of the pallet left. So all in all, I ended up selling 60% of that pallet for a total of $145 but I still had enough subway tile to do all of the bathrooms and the kitchens on both sides of the duplex and enough left over for another project. So I came out positive net $95 and a quality subway tile to show for it. Now I did the subway tile myself, so no charge for the install. However, I did go through three bags of grout because I could not figure out the water grout ratio and it hardened twice before I could finish. <laughs> Total rookie move. I ended up paying way too much for grout in the end, but hey, it happens. $60 for three bags. Fixtures and faucets were pretty much all from the Facebook marketplace, and I got some steals. Brand new open box Kohler Catton bath shower. Set originally at $300, I picked it up for $80. I bought the Master Bath waterfall faucet for $40, originally $150. The guest has Delta Pro fixtures for the tub, shower, and the sink faucet, for $70 and $50 respectively, all from the Facebook marketplace. Now the bath towel rack, hand towel rack, toilet paper holder, all totaled $220, brand new from Lowe's, but I just went ahead and bought them new because I wanted them all to match. So I really didn't do anything in the bedrooms besides installing fans. Uh, I sold the old ones for $10 each and installed new high efficiency stainless steel flush mount fans with remote access in both rooms. Now if I could do it again, which I guess in theory I could take them down and install something else. I honestly wouldn't get the fans with the remotes because it's just one more thing to break or one more thing for a tenant to lose. But the price was right because I bought one of them on the Facebook marketplace for $40. Now I wasn't able to find a match anywhere else. So I ended up buying another one that looked just like it brand new from Lowe's for $160. Now it did kind of hurt to pay four times as much, but you can't win them all. One other note, always do flush mounts without any dangling cords because it'll look so much sharper and make the room just feel a lot bigger. Now back to the bathroom. I kept the tub inserts. No need to cut those out, especially in a rental. If you're doing a higher end flip, it might make sense to cut those out and tile the shower area, but not for this unit. Pro tip, always keep the end in mind and think about the types of tenants you'll be renting to. If there's a good chance there'll be families with small children, it would be a necessity to have a tub for them to bathe in. Trim and crown molding. Definitely a bigger expense than I thought originally, but it definitely makes the place pop. I had a connection to a local lumber yard, so I was able to get a pretty good discount and buy in bulk. So to trim out the whole unit and crown molding in three rooms came to $840. I installed both myself with some help from friends. Now I invested in high quality Brad Naylor guns, both 16 and 18 gauge, and that's the only way I'll ever do trim again. Pro tip, always start with the door frames and work your way down. A solid miter saw will also be crucial to making these precise cuts. Appliances. Now I got a steal of a deal and there's really no other way to put it. I bought brand new four piece stainless steel Whirlpool set for $1,900. Now I used a few strategies here. Lowe's always has excellent package deals over Black Friday. Now a package deal will typically be your best price in addition to whatever that Black Friday deal is. Now on top of that, if you read the fine print, there are often mail-in rebates. Who actually mails in rebates anymore? Well, I do. <laughs> this reimbursed me an additional $200. And finally, free shipping and delivery was included, so I didn't have to transport them, which was nice, but there was one issue. I wasn't even close to needing appliances in November, but I wanted to buy them then to lock in the price. Now, I asked how long I could push back shipping, and they said three months. So I set my shipping date as far out as I could. Now, when we were two weeks away from shipping, I called in and had it pushed back another three months. I did this routine another time, and eight months later, I had appliances delivered into my remodeled kitchen. So I paid $1,900 for all four, while the set was currently selling on the showroom floor for $3,500. Not only did I get a great deal on the buy, but I also got eight months of free storage. So keep that in mind, when you're making a big purchase, oftentimes you can buy it now and have it shipped to you later.
I sold off all the old appliances together for $120. Last but certainly not least, I went ahead and bit the bullet and had the hot water heater and HVAC replaced. I had the same plumber install it that did my other fixtures, so my all-in cost was $600 after the additional piping, new gas, and water lines. The HVAC cost $6,000, which included the labor, materials, and install. Now, this is expensive, but doing it up front will save you a bunch of headache and hassle down the road. So, I definitely didn't do this perfectly. Before deciding to replace the HVAC system altogether, I hired someone to try to repump the R22 coolant and do a tune-up on the system. But it lasted two months, maybe three in the hot summer, and once again, it was blowing hot air. So I essentially flushed $550 down the drain, trying to maintain a 25-year-old system, but hey, I learned a lesson. So if you're still watching, I know you're truly a fan of learning in the weeds, and I can definitely respect that. Most of all these insights I accumulated through YouTube videos and trial and error. I told you I would try to be as practical as possible, so here we are. Before revealing the final cost of the remodel, let's take a look at what the after results look like. I'll include the before picture in the bottom right hand corner as we go from room to room. It really did blow me away how everything turned out. It was honestly far better than I expected. But now for what you guys have been waiting for. If you stuck around this long in the video, I really do appreciate it. You definitely deserve to know exactly how much was spent on the remodel and the after appraised value. So without any further ado, we spent a total of $20,441 on the remodel, but we made back $545 from rebates and Facebook Marketplace sales, which brings our total to $19,896. Now, the coolest part of all of this is one year after I finished the remodel, I had an independent appraisal done by the cost approach, the income approach, and the replacement cost, and they all came back at $250,000. So if you remember at the beginning of this video, I bought the duplex for $190,000. So if we add our purchase price, to our remodel cost, our all-in number is $209,896. So after simply subtracting the all-in cost from the new appraised value, we created over $40,000 in equity. And now that's a good chunk of what I make in my W-2 job, but I was able to do this in just nine months on nights and some weekends. And now one of the coolest parts about this is when we leave, we can rent this unit for around $1,200 and the unit next to us will rent for $1,000 to $1,100. Our mortgage payment is about $1,000, so that means each and every month we'll be cash flowing over $1,000. Now, of course there's expenses and you need to be saving for capital expenditures, but having replaced the hot water heater, the flooring, the HVAC, and some of the big items, the chances of major failure and expenses are mitigated. So feel free to comment down below what your biggest takeaway was from the remodel and if there's anything you would have done different, let me know. I'll read all of them and respond. Now, if you made it this far in the video, you're definitely a true fan and I appreciate it. If you want even more practical, in-depth content and full transparency on the financials, consider subscribing and we'll do this together. I hope this was helpful. Like I've said, if I can do a remodel looking up YouTube videos and figuring it out, I definitely know you can too. So with that being said, it is a great day to be alive and I'll see you in the next one.